Welcome back to part three of the Return to Sawtooth episode of Firefighters and Fire Trucks Getting Ice Cream. We just finished visiting the burnover site and now we finally get to wrap up with some chocolate ice cream at Pappy and Harriet's Pioneer Town Palace. Thanks for watching. Leaving the sawtooth fire once again in yeah. America, La France. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Luckily, the same way, yeah. alive. And this, and we didn't burn up Doug's engine. No. I'm, that I'm borrowing for a little bit. That's always a good start. Yeah. Uh, all right. Ignition. Push start. There it is. So basically enough, right? So sawtooth occurs. I'm the training officer at 20 Palms. And uh, at this point, I don't even, I can't even grasp all the things that happened on this fire yet. You know, the, uh, the 72 hour report came out and a lot of that doesn't even mirror um, what really occurred because not that we were trying to hide it. I, I didn't understand it at the time, you know? So going back as a training officer, I started doing a lot of research on human factors and crew resource management and, uh, and, and a lot of that stuff that I teach today. You want to back, back up? Let me back to the back right here. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> Edit that part out. <laughs> I did it in another episode too with Steve P. I said, Good reverse horn. So, um, some of the things that I've been fortunate in teaching for you is, you know, people sharing their stories of near miss or, you know, even LODDs that people have never heard. That right. it's the first time they were able to talk about it. But <clears throat> the way that you run your show and the way I try to run the classes, that hey. What more valuable lessons as a future instructor can you have than a few of those to up the recognition prime decision making slide tray with some some serious uh, no goes or do goes or whatever? Right. Well, on Red Helmet Training, I know that when we started that, we built it on a foundation of the six T's of fire service learning that we came up with. Um, case studies. We really wanted to push out case studies, the effective learning domain. Uh, we started off with tabletop simulation to try to embed that, you know, visual seeing learning type of atmosphere to try to get to that and, um, you know, bringing you on as an instructor and a lot of the other instructors we have, that's always the goal, you know, to make it a better, safer fire service and, and train the way you fight. And, and uh, amazingly, like we were talking about, uh, we went to Master Instructor together. And one of the big things I picked up on, not only teaching in that effective domain as much as possible, but I also picked up a concept with that Abilene paradox. You know, the, the inability to manage agreement. And I think that there was a lot of things on this fire where you actually saw that road to Abilene come, come to fruition when we're all kind of going with the plan and everybody's agreeing to the plan, but off to the side, we're all thinking like, I don't know if this is going to work, you know, but we're not speaking up about it or, or whatever. And, and I think we've all been on those fires, you know, you're on a wildland fire, uh, the captains meet with the, with the strike team leader, we lay out the plan 
And then as we're walking back to the engines, there's a couple captains going, well, that's never going to work. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah the group, group think. Yeah, yes, that, sir. Yes, Chief. Yeah, that group think and, and uh, sometimes just thought, you know, the thought that we're infallible, that we can't make mistakes or, you know, or, or just in the normal reason. Like, it's not like when I woke up that morning exactly. and came back on duty that morning that I said, you know what, I think I'm going to get Scott and Chris and Carissa in a garage and get them close to dying inside a burning structure, you know? Yeah. It's not like there's any, um, you know, committing that normalization of deviance part of that in your brain, you know? Um, and, and you look at normalization of deviance where you're just kind of going outside the parameters of what we do. And, and it started from literally before we even responded to the fire. Yeah. Because we're responding in somebody else's engine. Mm -hmm. Because both of ours were down. And, it, and it's pretty funny because Tornado and Palmas Fire Department, they have like these lime green, yellowish colored engines. Mm -hmm. And we picked this thing up, you know, the red engine the day before, very similar to this. And when the crew's coming on duty the following day, they're like, what's up with the red engine out there? And I go, oh, you guys haven't heard? County Fire takes us over tomorrow. Pack your shit, you're fired. <laughs> and, it, and it's a nice little joke, but that was the beginning to the Swiss cheese, uh -huh. you know? Especially when this thing comes, you know, the, the I keep referring to this thing because it's so similar to the It really is. is. The, you know, when it showed up, we should have said, time out, open cab, not going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, we all just go, all right, that's what we're going to deal with. Yeah. That's, then let's we're go. just going to go with it. Yeah. And you had a four-person crew, so driving out of it with guys in the jump seat really wasn't an option, right? Well, we did when we were leaving out of there, um, and that's where Carissa actually sustained the burns that she got. She yep. got second and third degree burns on her neck from being in an open cab engine. Yeah. But me pulling that engine kill switch on accident was the best thing we ever did. The emergency shutdown on that old 1980 regular France. If I didn't do that and we would have tried to drive out of there during the fire, we would all have been dead. God's grace uh, in mistakes. Yep. I, it, somebody was well, somebody was saying, "Hey, you need to really screw up right here." Yeah, yeah. you know that's going to be the best thing for you. You mentioned after actions. Several of the guys in several of our classes have told about incidents that were bad enough to do a formal after action where the whole department was required to review it, but they weren't done right. They didn't like. They wouldn't have. They would. They should have asked the people that were there. Like, is this? In keeping with what you saw, do you have anything to add? Right. And when it was released, I won't name the department, but one guy's wife bumped into the chief in the hallway and was not right. Was not uh, fulfilling the uh, dutiful wife mode. She gave yeah. him a, you know, it was like. So I guess that like Cal Fire has a pretty good deal with the special accident review team and trying to make it as factual without getting everybody all worked up about getting in trouble, but getting to the root cause. Right. Well, I'm, uh, I'm teaching a new class now um, called After Action Renew. Renewing the way you do your After Action program. Oh. And uh, it's putting After Action Review in three different stages, so or phases. Um, level one After Action Review would be, okay, you get a basic structure fire or a wildland fire. And afterwards, we just do like a tailboard. We all get together with the crews and go, what happened, what should have happened, what can we do better next time? A level two after action review is where there's some significant event where something goes outside of the normal box. And then you have all the crew members go back, fill out written after action review reports, pull the dispatch tapes, and then we schedule it on the training calendar a couple weeks later for everybody to get you back together and do that. A level three would be a significant incident where now you pull whatever videotape you got, whatever whatever photos you have, pull the dispatch tapes. But in that one, we also videotape the session and it goes out department-wide because it's something where there's, there's so much learning value in it that it needs to be sent out to the entire department. And I use one of our structure fires we had in Tornado and Palms where there was a ton of human factors, people doing things outside of the norm that uh, that really need to be looked at. 
and uh, and gone over. Let's see if I can find a place to, to park this thing to get ice cream. You want me to back you into the end of that thing? Oh, I guess there's I'm a turnaround parking, up there. I'm parking right here. Okay. Keep it in view. Yeah, so crazy enough, John, the, the owner of the house that we got burned over in, we came back up after the one year anniversary and we all came here to eat Davis with her, you know, and again, it's just, uh, thanks for trying to save my house. I'm glad you didn't die that day and have some pizza on me, you know? <laughs> cool. Right. So, uh, ice cream? Yeah. I I'll go get it. I think it's your turn to pay, anyways, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably. Probably. Uh, probably been freeloading too much. Uh, I'll take chocolate. Okay. Anything with chocolate, I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yeah, this is crazy. On huh? last time we were here, Pappy and Harriet. It's crazy. Um, the owner brought us out here to, you know, eat. Yep. After we tried to save his house. And, yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. It's so, been a long time since I've been here too. Yeah. Well, you you came for the one year the anniversary. The one year. And were you here for the five? I was here for the five, but the we didn't site. come to we didn't come to the site. That's when you gave the presentation for the first time. Yeah. Um, well, Big Bear. I mean, that that had been um, yeah five years in. Five years. I had given it several times at the uh, county training officers and Trapman symposium. That was the first time I had given it, and uh, and it really pushed me to go out and interview members that were on the fire, gather video, gather audio, um, and and really that's where I started to learn that it was it was even a bigger scale process than than I thought it was going to be. I, yeah, you know I knew that we got trapped, and I knew that we did some stuff tactically out of the norm, but to to see the stuff snowball. And, right. and and that's where a lot of the human factor stuff I'm like where how did this happen yeah you know yeah um, so when we did the presentation today I uh, I know that the other thing we talk about and and John kind of alluded to it where it's like you know what do you remember of it and and how does it vary between what you know now and, and today um, even all four of us didn't really have the same the same story, if you mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. on what really occurred, and that's right. that's not the human factors thing where you know your brain kicks out information and, and keeps what it wants. But um, you know, you've seen the presentation a couple times now. How in line from what I'm teaching out there, uh, as far as our burnover situation, yeah, to what you experienced is 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 the same or different? Or I think it's pretty accurate. I mean, everything from the from the weather conditions to the fire behavior that we saw and observed i mean it's all right on i mean it's, right. a, it's a collection of years of research and study and it's pretty accurate well and i know that uh, even myself i keep learning new things about the fire yeah. uh, the the fire video that we saw saw in the class today yeah that's relatively new i just got that about a year ago from yeah, another I've person seen that. that was in my class watching me give a presentation on the sawtooth fire and he says I was actually one of the safety officers on that incident and I have some great video for you. Yeah. And I collected that. Yeah. And then literally 12 years after the incident, I'm working in overtime out here in Yucca Valley. I was working with an engineer that was on one of the other engines where the air conditioning hose burned through and it dumped Freon gas in the cab. And, yeah. you know, they, they, we were in the garage while they were inside their engine with right. the Freon gas dumping in. Right. And I had always read or had had remembered that they were trading off their SCBAs while they were in the cab. Yeah. That's that's what I always knew the story to be. And as I'm working with this person, he goes, I wish we would have thought about that. Yeah. I we were just we were just in there 
just chewing on the free on gas. You know, I wish we would have thought about, you know, so it's amazing what your brain does during that adrenaline rush yeah. and just basic thought process just do doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't anything that you saw in the presentation today that was a little outside the, you know, difference. No. I know that there, the one thing we did discuss is I thought it was Chris Gertz right. that pushed me out of the window no. as we were exiting. But no, it, it, was, it was me because yeah. I, I found the window after you gave basically the order to let's find a way out and you guys met me at the window and i just picked you guys up one by one <laughs> right you on your head <laughs> yeah threw me out on my head, threw me out on your head. totally worth it, totally <laughs> worth it. I, I am missing a pair of sunglasses still i don't know if i've sent you a bill for those no yet, but no uh, yeah. no i haven't seen it yet <laughs> <laughs> um the other thing we were discussing is so after the fact, right? We we, we talked about Esperanza occurs in October, yeah. and that really that really kind of set us into a different mindset. Yeah. But I know that after the incident, um, I would replay it in my head and kind of sometimes zone out and 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 just replay it. I remember there was a time I was sitting at the computer in my office doing a report. And uh, the crew's like, hey, Cap, dinner's ready. And they're shouting it across the station, you know, yeah. dinner's ready. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I didn't come out. So finally somebody came in, knocked on the doorframe of the captain's office. Hey, Cap, dinner's ready. And, and I still didn't acknowledge them. And, and finally they come up to me sitting at the desk and it's like, Cap. And I, and I you know, kind of blinked out of it. And, right. and, I, and I knew that I was playing out sawtooth in my head, you know, when I came out of it thinking, all right, I know what I was doing, and mm -hmm. I was completely zoned out. But yeah. um, Chris Gertz, there was a couple times that he came to me and, and asked to talk, and we would – sometimes it wasn't even about the fire. Sometimes it was just like, hey, can we talk for a while? And, and he'd come in, and we'd, we'd discuss it. Um, and, uh, and me and you, I always tell this in the class, you know, me and you had just a, a little different dynamic. <laughs> you know, we didn't really sit down and talk about it or hug it out, but me and you always had this – this thing where we would be on another call and something would go a little awry yeah. and I would just like shoot you a look or you would shoot me a look yeah. like, yeah. hey, let's not do this again <laughs> or, or uh, let's let's stay focused here. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that was always the cool thing. I always said me and Scott had kind of just this weird, you know, all right, yeah. that, that's that's cool, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I remember, and I don't know if you were on this incident, but... Uh, we had a traffic collision after that fire. We had a traffic collision where we had a car come in, it hit a power pole, knocked over the power pole and sheared off the fire hydrant. And the water from the fire hydrant was undermining all of the front yard of this house, mm -hmm. the water pressure and all this. And the car was like through the telephone pole and the pole was laying across the, all this water. And uh, we're pretty much wrapping up the incident. We transported them to the hospital, everything was good. And then Sean was the captain on oh, the other Sean. engine. And dispatch asked him for a poll number for Edison. And he goes around the front of the car to like see the poll number. And all of a sudden, whoop, you see him disappear into the water. Oh. He's gone, just gone. And a couple seconds later, he comes up in the middle of, of the turbulent water from the undermining hydrant and grabs onto the telephone pole. And, uh, and, and I think Wiseman was with me. And I don't remember who the other crew person was. Probably yeah, Tyson Cox. I, I can tell you right now, it was not on that call. And uh, I would remember that it one. It was like... Go grab the attic ladder, go grab some pike poles, and we end up putting it across and bringing Sean back over. And he's he's coughing up sand for like a couple of days. We take oh. him down to the hospital. But it, was, it wasn't that far later after Sawtooth where I'm like, this stuff's got to stop happening, yeah. you know? And, and, <laughs> but you get those calls that it, they really make you wake up in yeah. how we do business. Yeah. Yeah, they really do. Ice cream. Hey, look hey. at that. You got some for the video production staff too, huh? Not too bad. Or did we all get this? This is for the guest of honor that wanted anything with chocolate. <laughs> or this commute. What is that one? They're they're both. They both okay. have both. All right. Is that peanut there's, butter there's chocolate? There's actually a fair bit in there. All right. Dealers taking a lighter look. <laughs> I I got to tell you, this is always the best. Okay. The best part of this show. It's literally firefighters, fire trucks, ice cream. That's the three best things in the world. Yeah. I don't know how you can go yeah. along with any of those. Yeah. Uh, especially with ice cream being such a staple of the fire service. Of the fire service. You know, every mistake we make, every pick time we get the picture in the paper. Yep. So if you think about it, Camera. the stuff from Sawtooth, how many times do we get our picture in the paper? 
How many mistakes did we make? Yep. We should still be owing ice cream. We should still be owing ice cream. <laughs> It is hot up here, so this works out really well. Mojave Desert stuff. So we were just, uh, we were kind of talking about um, some of the crew dynamics and how some of us remember parts of the incident. Some of us, you know, um, all four of us don't have the same story, mm -hmm. you know? And I know that you, you talk a lot about that in your class, you know, just that recognition, prime decision-making, how we make decisions. Um, you know, and how your brain recalls information. So it, it's kind Bruno of know had that. a quote about that, that while I was trying to make sense of certain incidents I was on and, and he told the class one day, he goes, a lot of how you end up in the fire service depends on where you were on the fire ground on any given incident. And he gave mercy to, you know, people that are just naysayers or whatever. Right. But he would always prompt their thinking in such a parochial but yet non-condescending way he could he could literally facilitate you to the right answer oh he had a just a tremendous gift of that yeah. i mean making the difficult things seem really easy almost to make you feel like yeah okay i get it <laughs> well what he did what he said though about like after the southwest kind of relates to this because he was the first time person i heard use the word energy in in the incident like btus versus gpms are you really are you really able to harness enough to, to make it not just a fair fight, but to kill it? And uh, the way he did it, he had these little building blocks. And he said, these are houses. How many of these did Southwest Market, did you have to drag lines past to get to the, like I thought if initially that he was losing it, but after <laughs> he did it, it made perfect sense, yeah. But your, your guys, you know, just knowing that that potential exists, Right. Just makes you aware. Yeah. You don't see 50 year old captains driving down the freeway and popping a wheelie in fifth gear. You do see the 23 year olds doing it. Right. And so you want aggressive people, but you got to have a little leash on them once in a while. Well, and it's pretty amazing. So myself and John, we actually had Chief Bernasini come out to Red Helmet training in 2016. It was March, I think. Of, uh, of 2016 and after the class I mean it's great enough just to sit there and just listen to him give all these just nuggets of wisdom right um, from him right but myself and it, it was we got to take Bruno to dinner and we went down to the old spaghetti factory and tell John I was like you want to go to dinner with us and <laughs> of course John jumped at the chance to hang out and uh, even if it was cheesy to take an Italian uh, <laughs> guy like Brunacini to an old spaghetti factory, right? Yeah, he loved it. He yeah, was quite he was all right cool. with it. He always is. And uh, it, it's always one of my my favorite stories with John. So we're talking about a firefighter that gets injured due to you know some some poor training event. Yeah. And um, and really the firefighter was doing something that that the captain directed them to do training wise, and it went against SOPs. Um, and it ends up tearing his rotator cuff, throwing, you know, a ladder improperly. And uh, so Brunacini says, you know, well, it sounds like the problem is, is that the adult, right, the captain is, is really abusing the child. And you need to report that to, you know, Child Protective Services. But <laughs> he, he really, he's got the placemat at the old spaghetti factory, the paper placemat. And uh, he always has a pen in his pocket. So... He flips this placemat over and John's got like, he's taking pictures of this because we've always heard about those stories where he draws and, and diagrams and he flips this placemat <laughs> over and he, he draws this hospital with multiple floors. Well, he heard the click and for, I would have thought, he's like, what are you doing? You know, but he right. saw it and he goes, yeah, he knows where I'm going. But it was actually in the context of four year wonder firefighters treating rookies like crap. Right. And he, he said, you've got this is your pediatric intensive care unit. He goes, what are these three squares? I go, I don't know, sir. <laughs> this is your peds intensive care unit. You got rookie, you got young firefighters hitting them over the head in their font nails. You got to call Child Protective Services. <laughs> but he draws like this hospital on the placemat and he's drawing and I, I'm just like getting, getting giddy like a little kid, like he's drawing something. And, you know, but he's just telling all these stories in, in the old spaghetti factory and uh, it, was good, it was good stuff. I, I definitely miss him for sure. But he's, he's been a part of the process of me, you know, this show and 
writing the book on managing employee fires, he's had a lot of hands in, in the way that we're progressing a lot of this stuff out, which was always cool. Yeah. He was a rare guy. Yeah. I wish he was here. He'd nice cream with us on the show eventually. I wish I would have came up with the concept of the show prior to. Yeah, this is good ice cream. <laughs> I was like, just going to ask you, how's that ice cream cap? It's, it's pretty freaking good. <laughs> yeah, it's Tillamook. It's really good. It is. I've always wanted to try Tillamook. Yeah. Um, there's like two half half gallons there now. I said they could have them. I hope I didn't. Nope. I didn't figure you'd get them. <laughs> yeah. I'm not bringing them home. Yeah. You, you can't bring them back to Seattle? Nope. Yeah. Um, so start planning for the next year anniversary of this thing. Um, you know, it. I tried to get Chris out. He, uh, I, I think I told you he's in Idaho. Yeah, he's in now. Idaho. Um, but I think right now, um, you know, next year is 14. 14. The year after that, <clears throat> let's try to figure out a way to get all four of us together for the 15th year. And uh, camera or not, we'll go get ice cream, come up here and hang out. And yeah, that sounds good. Have a good time. That sounds good. And, and bring you back down from Washington again. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leave John at home next time, and we'll be good. So, thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, man. It's good to see you. Actually, see you too, man. <laughs> it's good to see you too, brother. John, thanks for coming out and hanging sure. out with us today. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, John.